Hey guys, what's going on? JK, and welcome to the start of Season 2 of my F124 driver career. And I know that the thumbnail has already given it away, but it's time to decide who we're going to drive for for the next season of our career mode. But last time out, a late safety car stopped us getting the win in Qatar, but that was enough to conceal, seal, however you want to say, to, to secure P5 for Haas in the constructors and in the drivers. It was very close, but by a point, I was able to jump Lando Norris and finish fourth in the Drivers' Championship, which is an absolutely fantastic result. And as you can see here, we had a great season. We absolutely demolished our contract target. And as it says in that text, Aston Martin are sniffing around to try and get my signature. We have been having secret meetings with them, but are we going to sign for them? The answer is yes. And we are going to aim to get ourselves up to 84 rating with Fernando Alonso as our teammate. That was the big pulling point. We're going to try and sign for two seasons because if Fernando were to retire at the end of the season, I'd want to fly the flagship for Aston going forward. But the reason we've gone for two seasons is that. And then also, I really wanted to be a teammate of Fernando Alonso. And I have a feeling that with Fernando, we could maybe win the Constructors if we have a good enough car. So let's just hope the regulation change doesn't ruin us. And in terms of calendar, the only change is Portimao is on there instead of Mexico. Because Mexico was painful. But yeah, that is it. We are now an Aston Martin driver. And Fernando Alonso, the two-time world champ, is our teammate. So if we can help him out and try to get him his third world title. Or if he can help us out to get us our first, that'd be lovely. And these are a new thing that have been introduced. Now you can do these. I know Arrow did high inflation, but I didn't really want to do that because... Um, not this season anyway, but in the future we will definitely be applying things like high inflation and stuff like that, shortages, minor upgrades only, balancing out the field or something like that to have some fun. But this is the development. Everyone took a small downturn other than a couple of the lower teams and ourselves. We have closed, as Aston Martin, right up to the pack of McLaren, Mercedes and Ferrari. Let's have a look at the grids. So yeah, lads, there aren't really many changes. So there's mainly Ocon at Haas. We've got Magnussen at um, Alpine. And then we've got, I think, poor chairs now coming to the Williams seat. And Logan Sargent's no longer in the sport. I think those are the only changes, but you can correct me if I'm wrong. But yeah, that was... Um, we did a right in practice. I think we got everything done. We did a few laps ourselves. Alonso topping that practice session. I finished about the middle about four tenths off on mediums though which isn't a bad effort so we look like we could have good pace and according to the R&D we look like we are in that pack now Red Bull are about the same distance away from the pack as they were before but now we are in that pack so if we can have a good rate of development this season we could be eventually the second quickest car behind Red Bull but we are very close to McLaren Mercedes and Ferrari but into qualifying we go um, even in an even better team now and also running 105 AI for the whole season I'm expecting to be able to get through Q1 and Q2 with one lap unless we make a big mistake so coming through here I was like yeah brilliant this is good slipstream six tenths up on Valtteri Bottas but we're getting a good slipstream from Teo Porcher but it's going to get to the point where we come to this last corner which is a corner I'm normally very good at compared to the AI in race and in qualifying so in the end, Teo Porcher almost holds me up there as I wanted to get on the power a slight bit earlier, which probably cost me like a tenth or a half a tenth across the line, but we get a bit of slipstream up to the line, and in the end, we finish the session. We didn't do another lap, P13, so maybe a bit of squeaky bum time, but I risked it, and we managed to get through, which is lovely. Only two tenths off Fernando. And into Q2, coming around the final corner now, hopefully again trying to just get through with one lap. Um up to the line we're going to set a pretty solid lap time of a 127.4 which is only a tenth off my teammate Fernando and by the end of the session 
we still remain that one term for Fernando and we end up P7 ahead of the Mercs and also the Haas of Esteban Ocon knocking out Lando Norris in the McLaren. So Haas have still got pace and Ocon is now doing what I was doing last season which is carrying that flagship. So into the first lap of Q3, um, I was thinking, you know, realistically maybe there's a chance of pole because I was getting pole and stuff last season but 105 AI, like you've actually got to put together really good laps to be decent. So... At the same time, I was like, this could be like P9 or 8, or we're going to be like front row kind of thing. Um, so Science has set the quickest time of the session so far with a 26.9, and we're going to come around the final corner. We're going to head up to the line. Alonso set a 127.7, which is abysmal, and we set a 127.3. So we go four times quicker than Alonso, but Alonso 1.1 seconds off the pace. We're currently P9 and 10. Ocon is quicker than me. So we're going to have to try rectify that. And in our second lap, we do gain a little bit of time coming to the final corner where we made a big mistake on the previous lap. We end up coming out of the final corner with two and a half, half with two and a half, almost three tenths up to the line. And it's going to be a 127 flat, it looks like. But the grid was so close that we go from P9 to P4 in qualifying, which means we were four tenths off Verstappen. But realistically, we were a tenth off of Carlos Sainz, who was second. Verstappen is just so clear still. And Alonso gets out-qualified by Ocon in the Aston Martin, which, yeah, Alonso, that's that's mental, mate. You've got to do better, but obviously no grid penalties. We're starting P4, Alonso P10, and the strategy is a weird one. So it was telling me that I should go for a two-stop, or even a three-stop, as you can see at the bottom there. But I think a one-stop is possible. The chassis contains tyre wear, and we got even better during the chassis regulation change. So my theory is that the AI didn't protect their tyre wear upgrades, and that we did at Aston. So maybe the one stop is possible. We'll have to see. We'll be able to change the strategy as we go through in the race. But I'm looking forward to it. There should be a chance of us getting a good result in this race. If everyone were to two stop and I were to one stop. But we may not even do that yet. Okay, good grid position. And it's going to be five red lights for the season two kickoff in Bahrain. And it is lights out. And away we go. We get an all right start. As always, but we are going to get swarmed in turn one. The wheel spin gets a bit too much. And here comes George Russell down my inside in the Mercedes. We're going to try and look around the outside. No gap opens up, though. Can't sneak around the outside of Hamilton. But science have been forced off. And we squeeze our way through. A little bit of contact, but not enough to get any damage. But we squeeze ourselves through. Carlos Sainz should come back at us. But by the end of lap one, P3 is secured. And now we're in a battle with Sainz and Hamilton. Looking for P2. Verstappen started on soft, so he's definitely two-stopping. And he looks to have walked away in this race so far. He's already two and, a, two and a bit seconds up the road. So let's see if we can close in on Lewis Hamilton. But it looks like it's going to be science. We had a poor run out of that first bit of chicane. But we're going to stay on the inside. Four science around the outside and break later. Get a bit of traction and stop him from switchbacking me, basically. Um, we'll get a track limits warning there on the end of lap two. But we're still enthralled in, in this battle, and it looks like we, as a group of four, including Oscar, P Oscar Piastri in P5, have managed to pull ourselves away from the group of next cars, which includes the Ferrari, my teammate, the Red Bull, and the Mercedes. So, here comes Carlos Sainz. We're not close enough to Hamilton to make a move. We tried to use the RS to, to defend, but it's not going to be any use. We have to hang it around the outside of Carlos Sainz, leaving him plenty of room on the apex. And then, in the end, we can just take that pretty normally and squeeze him out but another poor run through this sector it means that here comes Carlos Sainz once again even Oscar Piastri looks like he might have a look but we're going to break a bit later than Sainz hang it around the outside try not to lose too much time on Hamilton but by the end of that lap I forced myself to push so hard through that middle sector that I dropped Sainz through the middle sector and caught back up to the DRS of Lewis Hamilton so that's a good thing that is a really good thing and using ERS on that straight to make sure Sainz didn't get DRS definitely kept him out but here we come now on Lewis Hamilton as it looks like the Alpine is retiring and a couple laps later battling between Sainz and Piastri Sainz and Piastri means that they're in a massive train and now we can stay with Lewis Hamilton but the tyres are overheating on the rears and that is causing excessive tyre wear on the rear tyres and on to lap seven we are now deciding finally to try and make a move on Lewis Hamilton I think but he locks up and almost clips a bit of my front wing end plate off very lucky that I didn't get damaged there, Hamilton. Um, and we lose about a second there, which could be crucial come the end of this race, especially if my planned one stop's still working. I mean, we're going to box soon, 
but it's going to be looking like about 20 laps on hard. So if we can only do about 10, 11, 12, we have a set of softs that we have from Quali that we could use and put on at the end of this race, depending on how the tyre wear is looking. So here we come on Lewis Hamilton on lap eight. Can we make the move? We're going to look around the outside of Lewis Hamilton. And we're going to break a bit later than Hamilton. Going to give him so much more room this time because if he locks up and goes into the side of me, I, I mean, there's nothing I could do either way, but the deeper I go, the less chance there is of him causing terminal damage to the car. But he's going to come back at us on this straight. We're going to force him to the inside, get back just about to the racing line and cut him off and keep ourselves in P2 because it looks like the win is out of reach. But in that lap, we are now reaching almost 60% tyre wear on the rear left, 40 on the front left and 50 on the rear right. 70 is about puncture territory, so we do need to be boxing soon. And I know it's going to be 20 plus laps, but it looks like the one-stop is possible. And I know that the AI won't do a one-stop. And because they're boxing now, this is definitely indicating a two-stop for the AI. So that means that all AI are on a two-stop today, other than, like, no, not other than, but I'm the only person not on a two-stop. All the AI are. Um, and I'm on the hards. And Hamilton had a poor pit stop. So now he's stuck in that little battle with Piastri, potentially. And I am now overtaking cars in the pit lane, getting myself back up to P2, eventually. And with a nice little gap behind me to just work on putting some good laps in. But it looks like Perez has got through a group of cars on the mediums, doing a similar strategy to Max Verstappen, and is going to eventually catch up to Hamilton. Hopefully he causes them to fight, which is what I need, because if Hamilton and Perez fight, then they won't catch me and be in my DRS and mean I have to train them. But Hamilton then gets a 10-second penalty defending from Perez on mediums. And the reason why is because there was a retirement, and Hamilton overtook, ignored the yellow flags, and didn't get the position back, and got a 10-second penalty for it. But... According to my wishes, Hamilton, Piastri and Perez are fighting, which A, stunts the progression of Perez on the mediums, and B, allows me to run away. Verstappen is 13 seconds up the road, yes, and has much better pace than me, but this should be P2, and if Verstappen does a does a free stop, no, sorry, not a free stop, a two stop, it could be a good chance for us to keep P2, if not P1, so, you know, let, let's give it a go. Let's see how things go, but 20 laps on the hards. If we make it to the end on comfortable-ish tyre wear, it just shows that the AI didn't upgrade the tyre wear or protect it, and Aston Martin focused on it, which is huge. But here we are, up to the line. Verstappen now pitched on his set of mediums. He's done soft, medium, hards. A lot of the AI have done, um, have done medium, hard, and I think they're going to go on another set of hards. But Verstappen, crucially, is going to come out behind that massive fight and behind another Ferrari as well. So he's got some work to do, but it won't be long before they all pit as well, as you can see. And I think they are all doing medium, hard, hard. I don't think anyone else really goes on to softs. The only man who uses softs in this race is Max Verstappen, which was actually a good decision because he pulled away by 10 seconds in the first stint. So, yeah, I mean, that was crucial for Verstappen to do that. But, yeah, Verstappen's got fastest lap. And now the AI are all 26 seconds behind. Other than Max Verstappen, he's seven seconds behind with nine laps to go, catching by a second a lap, over a second a lap. And by the time we get to lap 24, as you're about to see... Verstappen gaining so much time through that first sector and it's not looking good but the tyre wear is not awful 30% after 14 laps we're definitely going to make it to the end and I know we've missed out a little bit here but Verstappen has caught us and he's going for the move into turn one we managed to pull back ahead of him and in the end we're able to defend P1 from Max Verstappen I mean it's, it, may, it may be futile because there's only three laps to go and he's got much quicker tyres but if we play this smart there is a chance we win this Grand Prix as we send it back down the inside. We need to be ahead up until the final corner. And now let me show you how to defend from the AI on any difficulty in Bahrain. What you do is you get a really poor, in air quotation marks, exit. The Stappen goes past you on this straight, oh no, just before the DRS zone to the main straight. So now you've got DRS and you're right behind your rival on this straight, which means that basically you're going to re-overtake them. And if you do that every single lap and defend really hard in these first two corners, well, technically three, then you should be able to win a race. But can we do it? We're on much older tyres. I'd be deploying this strategy on equal tyre life. We're on 20, almost 20 lap old tyres, old hards, and Verstappen's on like half the amount of life hard tyres. If we pull this off, it's crazy. But Verstappen doesn't quite make the move there. Lap 27, about to come to lap 28. We're actually putting in really good lap times, and we have been all race. Hence why it took Verstappen so long to catch us, and hence why we have an 18-second gap to the nearest AI car. 
but Verstappen has got ahead of us again, but we have played it smartly once again, playing DRS Chicken with the Red Bull driver. And we're going to come back at him into turn one. He gives us the outside again, which I actually would prefer because it means I can break much later. Just squeeze around the outside. A little bit of contact between myself and Verstappen. He does manage to keep the position, but we're going to get the DRS again. And because I know it's so crucial to be ahead in this middle sector, we're going to go and send it around the outside of Verstappen, break much later. And we're going to clip him off at the apex just to make sure he can't keep his nose in and keep the position with his, uh, with his better grip. And now lap 28 onto the final lap of the Grand Prix. We're going to do it again. Verstappen overtakes us just before the DRS zone. And this time, we actually defend the position. And because Slipstream is overpowered on this game, that is a problem. Even with DRS and using overtake, Verstappen is still going to close in on me. He pulls out from my slipstream and he's still pulling in and pulling in and pulling in. We refuse to use overtake mode because we know we need it. We're going to defend the inside. We run a little bit wide. Verstappen could have got the switch back, but he wasn't thinking about it. And me running deep actually managed to help my case. We're going to get DRS again, but it doesn't matter. Here comes Max Verstappen on the last lap of the Bahrain Grand Prix. We're going to hang it around the outside. We're going to leave him a little bit of room on the inside, but he backs out. And that should be, as we come through the final sector, he's very, very close. We have a 61% one left and a 50% one right and a 50% front left. We have still got Max Verstappen right behind us. We need to defend into this final corner, even with this tyre wear. But it looks like, because we've done that successfully, we are going to win the Season 2 opener here in Bahrain. The one-stop has been pulled off. Great defending against Verstappen on the two-stop. What a race. Smiling faces on the pit wall then after that superb win here at Sakir. And rightly so, a brilliant effort from the whole team. Well, all their off-season work clearly paying off here today, Crofty. A brilliant way to start the season with a solid victory. It's a real good confidence boost as well. And you feel like that's going to really propel them forward through to the next race coming up. The Aston Martin team will be very happy with today's performance. And of course, the final result, another display of excellent driving and excellent teamwork and a well-deserved first place finish. And with that, guys, I believe that is Aston Martin's first race win in F1. But let me just show you how consistent my lap times were. I told you I'd been working on consistency on F1 games. And in the end, we had a good race. Alonso managed to get himself only up one position, which is disappointing, to say the least. But, yeah, if Alonso had done the one stop, he could have been right up there with me. You never know. And in the end, it looks like it's going to be you know, the two-stop versus the one-stop this season for me versus the AI drivers. It might make it a bit boring because my, my one-stop will always be better because I can defend, but I don't know. We might, we'll see how it goes. Hopefully, they don't want two-stop all season, but two-stops are quite fun. Um, as you can see here, look at them lap times. Pretty much low 31 ones up until Max Verstappen catches us, and then we are defending him, fighting him, so the lap times go a little bit little bit AWOL, there's the odd lap, which isn't obviously the greatest, but then we make for up for it on the next lap. And in the end, we were just super consistent. We drove a really clean race. We pulled off the one stop versus the two stop against the reigning world champion, Max Verstappen, which is very well done. And that puts us in a commanding lead in the teammate rivalry over Fernando Alonso, who obviously we outqualified and outperformed in the race. So that puts us 6 0 up against Alonso so far. Technically, if you're doing it by F1, like social medias, we are. 1-0 in qualifying, 1-0 in the race. Um, and we have beat Sergio Perez in the championship rivalry, which for some reason carried on from last season. And we are almost done with Lance Stroll, finally, in the rating rivalry. But as you can see, gaining valuable experience, loads of race craft, apparently, for that incredible strategy. Loads of awareness for the battling, a bit of pace for the good lap times, and a bit of focus for that race win. And overall, it's a very good result. And we are now up to the 80 overall. 
in this alternate F1 universe, we are a commanding driver and a commanding force to deal with for all the other teams, especially now with the superior tyre wear for at least this first portion of the season, we can now pull off successful one stops. And the Bahrain, I don't even have good pace. Imagine if I was at a track where I had really good pace, a one stop versus two stop, I could be P8 and win the race. Like, even if, like, I'm miles off the lead, I could just have consistent pace, only a few temps slower a lap if I push, and I could be up there. But we're getting all of our upgrades in. Everything is coming up Millhouse for Aston Martin at the minute, so to speak. And we are making more and more upgrades as we come into the Australian Grand Prix, which is going to be a banger. We had good pace on there last season, but that was obviously with lower AI, so it's going to be interesting to see how we do. But that is all for this race. I hope you all enjoyed. Let me know your thoughts down below. Should we be copying the AI strategy throughout the season in terms of a one-stop versus a two-stop to make it interesting or not. Let me know and look forward to the next episode. See you next time.